Well, today we are in the company of James Haskell, and really, we should say bonjour, James, because of course these days you're living uh, in Paris. We're in London, in Parsons Green, an old haunt of yours. And uh, why are you here? I've literally just come over for uh, for a few meetings with my uh, my father. Unfortunately, when he finds out I have a day off, I'm, I'm often uh, dragged back to, to London. I wanted to come back and get some uh, some physio as well, just uh, to change things up. It's quite nice, you know, to, when you've got a day off, you can go back on the on the evening before uh, before the day off, just catch the Eurostar back, and, and you're here, and then you're back I'm back tonight, and it's like no, I was never there. Good to get a bit of a London fix, James, because I'm hearing you have completely bought into life. Parisian style. I have. I mean, I'm, I'm without my baguette and my little bicycle and, and uh, onions. Oh yeah, my onions and my little espresso. But uh, yeah, I don't have. I think uh, it's very important when you go to a new city to, to fully uh, to fully embrace it. I mean, I, I think whenever you go somewhere new, it's never going to necessarily be your your complete home because uh, you know I'm an English person through and through. You're and, a Londoner. Uh, well, how Londonerish? I uh, mean, you're nearly a pearly king in that <laughs> London. <laughs> Not at all. I've got no badges and no jackets and funny hats. Unfortunately, I'm more um, more of a home country. I'm more of a Berkshire. Berkshire person, um, but no, you know, I think you know, going there, I've sort of really, really, in, really enjoyed it, and it, it is like a, a second home for me. But coming back here, it's always nice to smell a bit of London air in the morning. Now you're living with uh, Ollie Phillips, the former New Newcastle Falcon, uh, England seven star, and now star Stade Francais, your your teammates at Stade Francais. So what do a couple of young lads, single young lads, get up to in Paris? Well, just the usual, you know, quiet nights in, reading, music recitals. Um, uh, you know, I think uh, I sort of operate, and Ollie operates policy, that we sort of go out, um, you know, in an evening out to, to explore when sort of we won a match or, or whatever it might be. And last season, it looked a little bit difficult because the season didn't necessarily go as well as we wanted it to. So we had a, I, d I didn't necessarily discover as much of Paris as I hoped to. Um, Ollie is now the official tour guide for any visiting friends and, and family. He's, he's forced to organise everything. Um, you know, he's gained a couple of nicknames as well. The, the, the accountant, which is um, which is good well, because apparently, uh, according to our coach Michael Checker, when he plays, he looks like an accountant, <laughs> a small balling accountant. But you know, he's a uh, second top try scorer in the top 14. So, you know, if, if I uh, if I was an accountant scoring that many tries, I'd be happy days. Now, you've been there now for how long? Been there about uh, a year and six months. Eight right. Months. So, I mean, presumably, you are now a fluent. <laughs> right. Well, this is where it, this is a little bit different. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Excuses. I'm getting excuses now. No, actually, my understanding, you know, is pretty good, and I think uh, you know, I'm able to, to to converse, you know, reasonably well. I think um, my banter that, that sometimes I'm a little bit known for in England and that loud outspokenness. Well, it wasn't great when you were doing well, it in English. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't great when I was doing it in English. Thank you very much, for that Ian. But oh, I think in 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 Paris, I don't still have the ability to have that kind of banter. So normally, I just sort of verse into. To English, which um, doesn't often work, but I think if you shout it loud enough at them, they seem to understand what's going on. And, and say it slowly enough, of course. Yeah, that's, yeah, but I do. A lot of that's guys, how we speak foreign languages, isn't it, in this country? Well, listen, as, as Ricky Gervais said, you know, you can you shout, you know, you say it once and you shout loud, and, and then you just trash the place, knowing that you've tried your best. Would you treat us to maybe a little bit of French, or maybe even a nonchalant Gallic shrug? Maintenant, je suis, oh, je suis très fatigué parce que hier je travaille beaucoup avec l'équipe. Yeah, we, a bit. we could be in Paris. You could be in Paris, yeah, exactly. We're but we're not. We're just definitely not. We just need a little bit of Parisian street music, um, possibly a, a tramp lying on the floor fast asleep, because they love that in France. I've never seen that. The, 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 the tramps in France are a lot more professional than they are in England. They have a yeah. classier. No, well, they're classier because they have they sort of have, have a tent. They either go, they're either classier or they have a tent, have a full setup like a TV like you've never seen, or they will just literally lie in the road like I've never seen anything like that either. But you know, that's that's Europe, Europe for you. Now, I mean, you, a lot of question marks when you moved over to, to France. Is it the right thing to do? Um, it seems to me it has been the right thing to do because you're playing for a massive club. You're starting every week. Uh, not a great season collectively last season, going a lot better this season. So, plus the culture, plus the new experience. Happy days? Yeah, very much. I think, you know, a, a lot of people, if you look at um, guys who actually signed, maybe some of the uh, Southern Hemisphere guys or, or Northern Hemisphere who go to France, you know, maybe... There isn't. A, there's, there's less fail. Sorry, there's more failure stories than there are success stories. I think in general, some people go don't don't um, sort of feature very much. Uh, I think you know, touch wood so far. I've been quite lucky with, with, with going to Stade Francais. I think um, you know I had my I had my sort of fears of going there. You know I had my sort of second thoughts. It was a you know I took a lot of pressure to go there. But uh, you know I'm so glad that I didn't succumb to other people's opinions. I went with what I felt in the initial instinct, which was to sign for them. And it's you know I've had more adventures and had more life development in the last sort of, uh, 18 months than I've had anywhere else and that was you know, it's been pretty special. Now you may know this 
Six Nations are almost upon us. Uh, Wales v England, Millennium Stadium, Friday night, uh, probably the roof closed, a feisty affair looming. Um, and you like playing against the Welsh, I seem to recall you started against Wales, didn't you, uh, Six Nations uh, in 2010 at Twickenham. Just the two tries. Yeah, just the two. I mean, it was one of those acts. It's one of those things that, like, like a scene out of old school. I sort of, uh, I blacked out, and then I woke up after the game and didn't realise what had, what had happened. Um, but you know, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, England versus Wales is, is a big game. I think for both sides, you know, Wales have sort of didn't have a great autumn. Uh, you know, they're they're sort of their coach and the guys are under a little bit of pressure. I think you know, England had that fantastic moment against Australia. Uh, you know, got got a good victory against Samoa, and then you know, sort of the wheels came off a little bit against against South Africa. Uh, but this is. You know, this is about getting a consistency and, and you know, a lot of people perhaps didn't see that performance coming. We as a team certainly saw it coming because we, we see it replicated on the training field every uh, every day. So for both sides, it's going to be a massive occasion because you've got to get your Six Nations off to a, to a start. Yeah, and first game, momentum, it's important, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, and also the Millennium Stadium is the only place I've ever played where the crowd, normally people say, oh, can you hear me shouting in the crowd or can you hear the crowd? And you're like, you know, you sort of pay a bit of lip service. And, yes, of course, I notice the atmosphere. But Millennium Stadium is the only place where the last 15 minutes... Wales 20, England 15, you're by their line and the noise is so loud with the roof that it's it's so powerful that you can't even you can't even think, like it literally starts to affect you because it's like a weight on you because it just gets louder and louder and louder. Now, in one sense, James, it'd be lovely if you were an absolutely nailed on starter in that 15 every single game. Um, but the reality is if England are going to win the World Cup or get very close to winning the World Cup, you need two world-class players per position. And, you know, you've got a great scrap with Tom Croft at six, although obviously you can also play eight as well. Um, and I guess, you know, whether you're going to start against Wales, whether you're on the bench, whether you're involved at all, and I'm sure you will be, um, it, it's looking good from an English point of view. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I th the only thing I've sort of been nailed on recently in autumn was that I'd look good in the suit um, at the start of the match. I mean, that's really uh, the sort of certainty. I think, uh, you know, from my perspective, I was very disappointed not, not to play as much as I did in the autumn. I think... Um, my form going into to autumn with Stanford State was probably the best that I've ever been, uh, which, was, which was disappointing. Uh, and then to miss out on the bench to, to, to Henry Free was, was sort of even more um, sort of difficult. But, you know, the problem is, is that people like to talk about nailed on positions and people like to talk about um, consistency. But to be honest with you, the competitiveness of, of the squad and the modern game is that no one is guaranteed that shirt. I'm sorry, like, you know, you're perhaps your captain and maybe, you know, if you have a an informed sort of an informed Johnny Wilkins or someone like that you know that's probably the, the the place where it's nailed on but at the moment there's nothing certain and I think that competitiveness is so important for the squad and what you've got to do is it's a fine balancing act to keep everyone competitive but remember that you're all pulling in the right the same direction well if you don't get on to the uh, to 22 to play France perhaps you could phone up the French and say look do I qualify now I mean I can shrug I can I can wear a beret I can do everything you guys do yeah I, I don't smoke though I don't smoke the occasional uh, girls which is a, which I don't think is, is actually a requirement possibly for um for, for qualification uh, can you sit outside cafes in the middle of the afternoon drinking black coffee like tar I do you know what, I, I, I've, I've become a bit more co coffee connoisseur I actually went and bought myself a little espresso machine that's not a plug because I had to pay for it so um, they want to send me a free one then possibly but uh, no so I've got the old coffee machine now I, you know I'm a, a big espresso drinker uh, I don't understand why I was never really part of my repertoire before but I think it's just nice what I really love about the French culture is, is with, there is such a team environment like in London even though it's very similar to Paris in terms of size players don't get so lost you know what I mean you, 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 you see the boys a lot you just go out and meet for a little coffee after training and have a little chat there's always a little gossip and the, and the French love a, love a conversation so uh, whether I'm not bantering I'm certainly listening and adding my little two penny worth like you know Je voudrais an autre cafe very good your two euros worth well James it's always an entertainment in your company uh, do you know what French is for razor by the way no I'm actually obviously, obviously not no obviously not I've, I've gone for the bit more of the um sort of the dishevelled look at the Are you trying to become the new Chabal, perhaps? No, 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 no. I, uh... Oh, the sort of, maybe, I know he's Spanish, but that sort of Javier Bardem look, that yeah, sort of I rugged... Just, I just, yeah, I just think, um, you know, I've always gone for the little short haircut, you know, I, 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 I'm making it sound like I've, I've really thought this through, but I just thought, look, I always have short hair, I'll try and grow my hair a little bit and see what happens, and, and the beard, I think, just sort of fitted in nicely with it. There just we that, go. That little bit of je ne sais quoi, you know? A little bit of je ne sais quoi. Well, merci beaucoup. That, that's thank you very much. Oh, no, I don't care. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> and we'll, we'll catch up with you soon. We'll see.